Recently on the channel, we bought you my top three disappointing running shoes of the year. It seemed like you guys really enjoyed the content. Uh, there was lots of great comments and a lot of you also agreed with my choices. However, I did say at the time that we like to keep Run For Adventure a positive place because, you know, there's enough negativity in the world. So in today's video, I'm going to talk you through my top five running shoes of 2023. I'm sure a lot of you out there will have already guessed some of them, but you never know, there might be a few surprises along the way. So let's get stuck in. Welcome back folks, thanks for joining us for another video. It's great to have you all along. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. So it has been a really good year for testing out shoes and I've actually enjoyed running in quite a few pairs. So it's made picking out this top five list pretty tricky. And what we're gonna do is once we've gone through the list, I'm gonna give a few honorable mentions to shoes that almost made it. They came really, really close, but let's dive into shoe number one and by number one, I mean number five, because we're obviously doing this list in reversed order, but let's take a look at the first shoe. Now, shoe number five is a trail running shoe that I tested out quite early in the year, and it's actually a shoe that I've wanted to try out for a while. Uh, it comes from the brand New Balance. Now, get ready for the longest, craziest shoe name in history, and it is the New Balance Fuel Cell Summit Unknown V4. Uh, a great trail shoe with a pretty silly name, if I'm honest, but never mind. So yeah, I really enjoyed my time running in these. A nice, lightweight, nimble, responsive trail shoe. I've actually used them for several 10K races out on the trails of Cornwall, and I've been really impressed with how they performed. Just like a lot of New Balance shoes, the upper fits my foot shape like a glove, but I've got to point out, this is a very narrow fitting shoe. So if you do need a bit of width or you like a bit of space and room in that toe box, then these are probably not gonna work for you. Weighing in at 280 grams in a UK 10 does feel nice and nimble when you're out on the trails. And for me, it's that perfect shoe for running quickly over more technical terrain. Uh, it's cushioned, but it's not over cushioned. So you still feel nice and connected and stable underfoot. The Summit Unknown is available in a standard version like we tested but you can also get it in a soft ground version and that comes with a, a slightly deeper more aggressive lug pattern but to be fair the standard version the level of grip and traction from this outsole has been really good anyway but i really do think these are a bit of a an underrated trail running shoe because you don't hear a lot about them and retailing for 125 pounds i also think it's pretty good value in today's crazy running shoe world so if you're looking for that lightweight responsive narrow fitting grippy trail shoe then these are definitely worth a closer look now up next we are going to the roads and i think uh, the next shoe might be a bit of a controversial choice because i've heard some positive stuff but i've also heard quite a lot of negative feedback and it also comes with a slightly ridiculous price point but i really have enjoyed running in them to the point where my last 100 miles of road running has been done in this particular shoe so it is Saucony's deeply cushioned kinvara pro when I first heard that Saucony were gonna be producing a deeply cushioned pro version of their very popular lightweight daily trainer, the Kinvara, I did think the brand had gone slightly mad and I couldn't really work out where a shoe like this was gonna fit into their sort of current road running shoe lineup. Uh, if I'm honest, I still don't really know where it fits in, but I have really enjoyed the feel of it when I'm running out on the hard stuff. I'm a big fan of the dual compound midsole and by dual compound, basically you've got two different layers of foam so the top layer closest to your foot is Saucony's performance driven power run PB and then underneath that the bottom layer is their slightly firmer more durable standard power run what this gives me is a, a nice comfortable high energy returning feel underfoot but even though it's got this pretty high stack height you still feel nice and stable and nice and grounded because of that firmer layer of standard power run foam I also really like the speed roll geometry that Saucony use in a lot of their shoes nowadays. It feels nice and efficient when you're just bobbing along on a steady run, but then if you do pick up the tempo, it really does sort of spring into life. I'm not sure I felt a lot of feedback from the carbon plate, and to be honest, 
I don't even know whether we need a carbon plate at all with it being a training shoe. And the only other thing is, we've got this fully exposed EVA outsole and I would have liked to see a little bit of blown rubber on there just in the high wear areas. Obviously it's to keep the weight down, but I think a, a little bit of rubber would have made the shoe more durable. Although to be fair, this power run foam does hold up to mileage really well and the shoe's showing very little wear at all, but I still think a little bit of blown rubber would have been the sensible idea. Being a Saucony upper, it has worked really well for my foot shape. It's felt nice and light and nice and airy wrapped around my foot. But it's also, for me, got just the right level of padding in that gusseted tongue and around that ankle collar that it gives you that really good balance. So it feels light enough if you want to go out and do that quicker training session, but it also feels comfortable and padded enough if you just want to put them on and go out for a nice steady long run. Before we move on to the next shoe, I've obviously got to address the elephant in the room, and that is the slightly ridiculous £200 price point. Now, I know it's obviously a performance-driven training shoe with a carbon plate in it, but £200 is a lot of money to spend on a training shoe. I would much rather like to see the Convara Pro at around about 145, 150. I think that is a much more realistic price, but you know, putting that all to one side, I really have enjoyed pulling them on and getting out there and running on the roads. And I actually think it is a very versatile training shoe, even though it is a little bit pricey. Making it into our top three is a trail running shoe from the Hoka brand. And no, it's not their Spigo 5, it's actually their Mafati Speed 4s. Now, when I tested these out earlier in the year, it was actually my first time running in the Mafati model ever since Hoka released the original version of the shoe. And I didn't actually enjoy running in those. So I didn't really expect a lot from this, but when I laced it up on that first run, I had a great run and it's actually become a big part of my current trail running shoe rotation. Again, I'm a big fan of this dual compound ProFly setup in the midsole and I actually think it offers a really good balance of comfortable, high energy returning cushioning. But even though you've got that deep stack height, you still feel well connected underfoot. So nice and planted and nice and stable, even if you are running on more technical trails. The outsole comes with this nice chunky five mil lug pattern, but you also get the brilliant Vibram Mega Grip sticky rubber. So really good on rocky or wet rocky trails, but then you've also got that aggressive lug pan, so it handles the muddy stuff really well. I actually used them recently on the Penrose Woods 20K. We've had a lot of rain down here in Cornwall. The far side of that route was super boggy, muddy, sticky, slippery stuff, and this outsole handled it all with ease. I personally think that the Mafati Speed 4 is probably one of the best trail shoes in the current Hoka lineup. I have heard of some lacing issues with the Mafati where the eyelets have actually been splitting uh, and splitting pretty quickly. I've done about 100 miles in these now and I've had no issues with the upper at all. Uh, it's definitely a narrow fitting shoe though and that's coming from me, someone without a wide foot. I would like to see a bit more width in that toe box especially for those longer runs, it'd give you a bit more wiggle room when your feet expand. But I really have uh, enjoyed running in them. I'm gonna continue running in them as well, that's for sure. But that's three shoes out of my top five, but I wonder what's taken top spot. Anyone that's followed the channel for any period of time will know I was a big, big fan of the original Exodus Ultra from Saucony. I ran lots of tough, challenging training and racing miles in those shoes, and they never let me down once. It really was a top performing trail shoe for me. Uh, earlier this year, it had a bit of an update to the Exodus Ultra 2, and I would say maybe less of an update, uh, a slightly redesigned upper, but it still carried the identical dual compound midsole setup. I've still really enjoyed this shoe. I still think it's a very versatile trail shoe that sort of crosses over between road and trail really well with that dual compound midsole. Super comfy on the road or trail. I think it could do with a slightly deeper lug so it handles muddy conditions better. But even though I have enjoyed them, I still don't think it performs as well as that original version of the Exodus. So taking number two spot is the Exodus Ultra 2. Now maybe it comes as a bit of a shock to some of you that the Exodus isn't taking my top spot this year, but the shoe that is gonna come in in first place, my top performing running shoe of 2023 is, yep, it is one of Lidl's own trainers. This shoe has been, okay, this hasn't really taken top spot, but there's gonna be more to come 
uh, about this shoe on the channel very soon, so keep your eyes peeled. But the shoe taking a top spot in 2023 is, yep, it's these bad boys, the new kid on the block. It is Merrell's Agility Peak 5. Now, before the start of the year, it had been a long time since I'd run in a pair of Merrell trail running shoes. And I actually tested out a pair about five or six years ago. And, you know, if I'm honest, they were pretty bad. So I didn't really know what to expect with these. I laced them up on that first run and I was super surprised with how they performed and how they felt and it's actually become my long run shoe of choice. The upper fits my foot shape like a glove, great lockdown, just the right amount of width in the toe box but I also love how this shoe performs in wet conditions and believe me I've done a lot of wet winter running in the Agility Peak 5s and it just sheds water so quick. It doesn't hold on to it and I haven't had squelchy feet in this shoe once and I have been out in some very wet conditions on the coast path in it. And then we've got that brilliant performing outsole with the combination of that nice 5mm chunky aggressive lug and the brilliant Vibram Mega Grip rubber. So I really do think it makes the Merrell's outsole the sort of perfect outsole for winter UK conditions. The Float Pro Foam in the midsole has offered me a nice comfortable ride, but I wouldn't call it the, the deepest, softest trail running shoe in the world, but still nice and comfy on any terrain over any distance. But I still feel nice and connected and nice and stable, even when I pick up sort of more challenging technical sections of trail. And then we've got that flexible rock plate worked into the forefoot there, which has offered me that little bit more protection when I'm running on rocky trails. And that's actually worked really well. I've almost run 300 miles in them and I've still got no complaints, but I am gonna be getting a new pair soon so I can get them nicely bedded in for the arc of attrition next year. So yep, the Merrell Agility Peak 5 is definitely gonna be my first option when it comes to running the arc. So there you have it folks, my top five running shoes of 2023 and the Merrell Agility Peak 5 has taken top spot. Uh, I said I'd do a couple of honorable mentions and the first one being the Hoka Zinao 2, a shoe that really impressed me, you know. Uh, it's lightweight, it's stripped back, but it still feels very comfortable underfoot over distance, almost made it into the top five. Also the Norda 002, I think a lot of the issues I had with the 001 were corrected in that shoe. I've really enjoyed them. Again, it might have made the list if it wasn't for the crazy price point. And then lastly, believe it or not, a Nike shoe, the Wild Horse A. Again, loved running in that shoe. I think if, if it was 20 or 30 grams lighter, it would definitely have improved the overall performance. But I'd love to hear from you folks. You know, what do you think about my top five picks? Even better, I'd love to hear about the running shoes that you've enjoyed. So get in the comments below, let us know all about your favorite shoes of 2023. So that brings today's video to an end. Really hope you enjoyed it. Really hope you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't already because it really is a big help to the channel. We've got lots of great content heading your way, including the Run for Adventure giveaway extravaganza announcement video. We've also got our Running Gear of the Year and our episode two in our Arc of Attrition series, plus lots more. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching. It's really appreciated. We'll be back on the channel very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. Welcome back folks, thanks for joining us for another video. It's great to have you all along. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Now it has been a really good year here for when it comes to, for when it, blah, 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 blah. So it really has been a good year when it comes to testing out shoes and there's been quite a few that I've really enjoyed running in. So it's been pretty hard to pick just five for this, uh, th th <laughs> Welcome back folks, thanks for joining us for another video. It's great to have you along. It has been, no, what about my name? I forgot my name. Uh, I've got to say, I still really enjoyed running in them.